All right. People of the state of Michigan versus Christy Seeley Roberts, 2023457. Uh, Ms. Seeley Roberts is uh, here today on video. Ms. Yancey is her attorney, and Mr. Gabry is the prosecutor. And it's my understanding this is for a plea, so I'm going to swear you in. Ms. Roberts, uh, if you'd raise your right hand, you soundly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Gabriel, what's the offer? Uh, the offer they were making is that if she were to enter a plea of guilty to assault with a dangerous weapon on a Darlin Prather, uh, we would dismiss counts one, three, and all habitual supplementations, including the drug double. Okay. Uh oh, we lost Miss Seely uh, Roberts. There she is. She's back. All right, Miss Yancey, is that correct? It is, Your Honor. All right, and the offer then, uh, Ms. Roberts, is that you plead to a charge of assault with a dangerous weapon. It's also called felonious assault. It's a felony punishable by up to four years in prison and or a fine of up to $2,000. Uh, the other counts would be dismissed as would the habitual offender notice. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, sir. And are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No. Okay. No, sir, I'm not. And uh, so then how do you plead to the charge of assault with a dangerous weapon? Uh, can I plead no contest? Uh, wh why would the no contest plea be? It's very limited either to uh, you have no memory of it, uh, potential civil liability. Uh, the prosecutor doesn't like to do. Well, no I, have, I, have, I have memory up to a point. Okay. I, I know it's no look and ten grade, but I, I know I have a memory up to a certain point, and then after that point, I don't remember because I don't remember going after her at all, but I remember she came at me first, and I remember setting a knife down and so on and so forth, but after that, I don't remember what, what I did. So you remember that. an altercation taking place. You remember having a knife, but you don't remember the details. Is that right? And oh, lost her. My phone is acting up. Sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. All right. So, Mr. Gabry, I don't have a police report. Do you have any objection to doing that? No, if it resolves the case, Your Honor. I'm... Okay. Ms. Yancey? Um, no, Your Honor. Her and I did talk about the fact that she had the knife, that it was there. Um, that the other gal was in there. I can send over the police report right now if you'd like. Whichever is easier for whoever it is. If you could send it to me, that would be great. I'll need that. All right, Miss uh, Christy, what name do you go by? Is it Roberts or Seeley now? Apologize. What name? I do apologize. Like I said, my phone, I don't know why it's acting up. It is, and it keeps jumping back to the video, you know, the join group or whatnot. <laughs> well, there is something going on with the uh, internet worldwide today, apparently. I saw on the news. Okay. Um, All right. So it may not just be your phone, but we have to make sure you understand what's going on and you hear what's going on. So if you don't hear anything or hear something that's important, okay. let us know, okay? All right. So, what right, what name? Are, what what's your last name these days? What are you going by? Seely Roberts. I got married. Okay, Seely Roberts. Okay. Now, uh, we've known each other a long time now, uh, Christy. Oh, you know what, Chris? Yeah, yeah you keep jumping out. I'm. Uh, I haven't, Miss Yancey. I, I haven't is there, got. Is there a way I can call there? No, I want to. I want to do this on video, so we'll just take our time. We'll get through it. Okay. You're hearing everything, and All we're right. just, you know, we'll just be patient. I haven't gotten the police report right, yet, Ms. Yancey. So yeah, I'm downloading it. For some reason, my internet's super slow right now, but I'm downloading <laughs> it. You. Rachel That's what I said. To, Rachel's trying to get one up to you, Judge. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, let's go ahead, uh, Miss Celia Roberts. Um, 
Do you understand that a no contest plea is treated the same as if you pled guilty? The only difference between a no contest plea and a guilty yes, plea is that in a no contest plea, I get the factual basis from some source other than you. In a guilty plea, you tell me what you did that makes you guilty of the offense. Uh, but the conviction enters the same and everything else is the same. You understand that? Okay, I got the other than you part. Okay. So other than you telling me what you did that makes you guilty of the offense, everything else is the same. As long as I'm, I'm satisfied there's a factual basis, the conviction enters and everything is the same. You understand? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. So due to lack of memory, I can accept a no contest plea. Is that how you plead? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, has anyone promised you anything else to get you to plead no contest? No, sir. Anybody threaten you to make you do so? No, sir. Are you doing this of your own free will? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> okay. Now, do you understand that if I accept your plea, you're not going to have a trial of any kind, and you'll be giving up the right you'd have had at trial? Those include the right to be tried by a jury, to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, to have the prosecutor prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are guilty, to have the witnesses against you appear at trial, to question the witnesses that appear against you, to have the court order any witnesses you have for the defense to appear at trial, to remain silent during the trial and to not have that silence used against you, or to testify at trial if you want to testify. Do you understand you're giving up those rights? Yes, sir, I do. And in fact, Ms. Yancey sent you this form and you signed it uh, and already read that. Is that correct? Well, it was read to me, but yeah, I know what it says because I don't okay. have my glasses or I think that, so. Okay, and we have a signed form from you. All right, good. Now, let's see if I have that packet yet. Got it right. Yeah, we need to, I'll print it out. Print one sided. All right. So, from the police report received from the Sturgis Police Department, March 1st, 2020, at six o'clock in the evening, in the city of Sturgis, County of St. Joseph, State of Michigan, Sturgis Police were dispatched to that address uh, in Sturgis female armed with a knife threatening to stab the caller. Upon arrival, they made contact with a witness who stated that Christy Seeley was sitting on the couch and was said to be in possession of a knife. Uh, I had my service weapon unholstered and down by my side, entered the apartment, requested Seeley to locate the knife for me. She said the knife was currently in her purse, which was located on the floor. She leaned over and attempted to go through the purse to locate the knife. At that point, I stopped her. I uh, eliminated the area and the open purse in plain view, and I saw what believed to be a small subcompact Glock handgun, at which time I told her to back up. I took possession of both the knife and what appeared to be a, a Glock handgun. As I secured the weapons, I discovered it was actually an airsoft pistol. pistol. It should be noted the airsoft pistol did not have the orange tip and it appeared to have been painted over black to match the slide. Furthermore, there was a camouflage cloth wrapped around the handle in an attempt to conceal the CO2 cartridge chamber. I asked her to get up off the couch so the area where she'd been sitting could be checked. Uh, she slid what appeared to be a black zippered bag underneath her, attempting to conceal this from officers. Officers Hopkins asked to get the bag. She denied any knowledge of the bag. Uh, she then handed the bag to Officer Hopkins. She, she said in the bag was some mar marijuana paraphernalia. Uh, Ms. Seeley stated that her and her roommates, Ms. Prather and Mr. Davis, were asked to leave the residence, and they were going through her, their belongings and packing up. She said that she had been there a couple of days and was given permission by the tenant, Lisa Davis, who had already moved out. Uh, Seeley was uncooperative with officers during the interview, but we were able to confirm an argument did ensue between Prather and Seeley. And during the argument, Seeley did make the statement that she told Prather, 
I'll beat your ass. She stated she reached down into her purse and retrieved the knife and then placed the knife on the arm of the couch where she was sitting. This action indicated she was preparing to use the weapon against Prather after making the statement that she was going to harm her. Asked why she retrieved the knife. She said that she knew that Prather had a knife of her own, which she keeps in a closet. It should be noted that Prather and Davis sleep in the closet on the floor and Seely slept on the couch. Um, interview with the brick victim. I spoke with Darlene Prather in reference to the felonious assault. She said she feared for her life when she was approached by Miss Seely, who was in possession of a knife. The knife was held upside down in Seely's right hand, brought up over her shoulder. Miss Prather, while making the statements, I will gut you and I will effing kill you. I stated she stated she was scared and threatened by Seely and wished to press charges. And then the, the report goes on with additional information that will all be entered. Uh, into the report, uh, statements from everyone else. But our council satisfied that a faction. Sorry about that. Sorry, right. I'm waiting for you. Okay, your picture's back. Our council satisfied that the police report will establish a factual basis for one count of felonious assault. Prosecution is, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And are you the council aware of any other promises, threats, or inducements? I am not. None, Your Honor. Has the court complied with the court rule? The court has. We have, Your Honor. All right. I find that the plea is made knowingly, understandingly, and voluntarily, and there's a factual basis. Therefore, I accept the plea. We'll set this for sentencing on July 23rd. This event occurred a year ago. Uh, is there any objection to bond continuing, Mr. Gabry? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Seeley Roberts. Uh, we have your address okay. now. Thank you for that. Um, we will be sending you the packet to fill out. And we will also uh, be forwarding this document to the DOC so they can start your pre-sentence. We you lost her again. Okay, right. good. You're no, back. You're good. I heard what you said. That sent it to, yeah, to the DOC to start my pre-sentence report. Okay, good. So, yeah, they'll be doing the interview with you, and then we'll be ready for sentencing on July 23rd. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. And I'm um, on the June 21st. Do I have to show up or can I do it on Zoom? I need to know. No, you, no. if you can't make the payment, show up, okay? Okay, all right, that's what so, I need 